by now you should have read section 10.1 about what a stationary distribution is. It's a distribution that solves pi equals pi p. You should have also read section 10.2 up to this point, which is talking about how to find a stationary distribution. So you should know you write down the equations for pi equals pi p, solve them in terms of a working variable, and use the normalizing condition. And so this video is just to go through an extra example, and that example is example 10.1. Okay, so here's the example. We have a three-state Markov chain with that transition matrix, and we're being asked to find the transition probability. So, of course, the first step is to write out pi equals pi p. So, uh, remembering that pi is a row vector, that's asking us to solve that equation, pi equals pi p. So let's write that down, a coordinate at a time. The first coordinate is uh, pi 1 equals, and then we go down the first column of the matrix, don't we? So that will be half pi 1 plus a quarter pi 2 plus 0 pi 3. So pi 2, again we work our way down the second column of the matrix, so it's a quarter pi 1 plus a half pi 2 plus a quarter pi 3. And for pi 3, we work our way down the third column of the matrix. So that's quarter pi 1 plus a quarter pi 2 plus 3 quarters pi 3. And of course, we always have the normalizing condition pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi 3 equals 1. We'll come back to the normalizing condition later. As we said before, we can discard one of the top three equations, because it turns out we only need two of them. Uh, since the top equation is the simplest one, I'll, I'll keep that. So I'll discard one of the others. I'll discard the third equation. But if you discarded the second equation, it should all work out the same. And then I'm going to uh, pick a working variable uh, in order to uh, decide what I'm going to solve in terms of. Um, I don't really want to pick pi 3 as my working variable, because that doesn't appear in the in the first equation, so that would be awkward. So let me pick pi 1 as my working variable. Uh, so this top equation will become, uh, take the half pi 1 over the other side to get half pi 1 equals a quarter pi 2. Um, I guess I could multiply everything up by 2 there, couldn't I, to get pi 2 equals 2 pi 1. If you wanted to take one more algebra step in order to check that that first equation becomes pi 2 equals 2 pi 1, that's fine. I've just uh, done all the steps at once. Uh, for this second equation, uh, I guess uh, pi 3 I'll want by itself. and I'll, So I'll multiply everything up by 4, leave the pi 3 by itself to get pi 3 equals uh, the half pi 2 multiplied by up by 4 becomes 2 pi 2. Uh, the 1 quarter pi 1 over to the other side is minus, times it by 4 goes up to 1. So that's uh, 2 pi 2 minus pi 1. Again, if you want to take just a couple of extra lines to do that rather than doing it in your head, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I wanted to solve just in terms of the working variable pi 1. So here I can substitute the uh, 2 pi 1 equals pi 2 into there, can't I? So this becomes uh, the 2 pi 2 becomes 4 pi 1. So this is 4 pi 1 minus pi 1 equals 3 pi 1. And so my solution in terms of the working variable pi 1 is pi 1, that pi 2 is 2 pi 1, and pi 3 is 3 pi 1. Okay, well, that's not solved yet because that's still in terms of the working variable, but now I can use the normalising condition, which is that they add up to 1. So pi 1 plus pi 2 plus pi 3 is, from that solution, it's pi 1 plus 2 pi 1 plus 3 pi 1, uh, which equals to 6 pi 1, and the normalising condition is that they have to add up to 1. So if 6 pi 1 equals 1, then pi 1 equals a sixth, which means that, that pi 2 equals 2 times a sixth 
equals the third, and pi 3 equals 3 times a sixth, uh, which equals a half. And so finally, the solution is one sixth, because that's what pi 1 is, one third, because that's what pi 2 is, and one half, because that's what pi 3 is. That's the answer. Note, if I wanted to be absolutely sure that I'd got the correct answer, I could go back to my discarded equation here and substitute everything in and just check that that one works. So that, that's the kind of thing that can be useful to do in, say, an exam if you want to be certain that you've got the right answer. You can substitute it back into the desired equation just to check.